I am continuing my series this morning, and uh, therefore I won't be preaching a traditional Palm Sunday message, uh, but uh, you still have the one I preached last year in your heart, <laughs> and uh, chew on it again. Genesis 37 and 5 said, Joseph had a dream. Now, Joseph had a dream. If I were writing that verse, which I wasn't, but if I would, I'd say, Joseph had a dream, dot, 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 and it turned into a nightmare. <laughs> We told you last week where Joseph, what happened to Joseph because of the, the hatred of his brothers. He was cast into a pit. Uh, actually, at first, they were just let him die. Then they talked about it and said, why don't we make a few bucks on him? Uh, selling for 20 shekels of silver, the price of a slave. Sold him to a Midianite group. They took him. Took him down to Egypt. There was a reason. God had a reason for all this. You'll see that later. Amen. Amen. And uh, I talked to you about dreams. And I'm so glad that I'm at the age, according to the Bible, where I can dream dreams. Johnson and Sean are still having visions. And I'm dreaming dreams. Amen. Amen. All throughout the Bible, God spoke to people through dreams. How many ever had a God dream? Amen. It's awesome. If you've never had a God dream, I'm praying that God would give you a God dream. Amen. Amen. When you get a God dream, you prepare for it. You know you want to see it come to pass. Joseph had a prophetic God dream that the entire nation, his entire brothers and family would bow down to him. At 17 years old, he pops on the scene and says, hey, fellas, let me tell you something. Someday you're going to bow down to me. <laughs> What do you think that would happen about that? <laughs> now, I got to tell you, I was raised as the youngest of 10 kids. I had a baby sister that died when she was six months old and I was a year and a half, so I became the baby of the family. Mm -hmm. And I don't think my brothers would have liked it if I would walked in and said, hey, I'm going to rule the roost. <laughs> Someday you're going to bow down to me. I'd have probably been laid out. <laughs> the brothers hated him because of that. I talked about that last week. See, his dream, Joseph's dream was bigger than him. That's a God dream and it's bigger than you. And he didn't have, it was a prophetic dream that he was not prepared for. See, sometimes God shows you something that you're not prepared yet for. God promises you something that you're not yet prepared for. And that was Joseph's problem. He wound up in Egypt and did very well. He wound up in Potiphar's house, taking care of all things of his house. But Potiphar's wife threw herself at him. Every day, she would entice him and entice him. That's what sin does. It entices you. I told you it's not a sin to be tempted. Temptation is not a sin. Following through with it is. Joseph loved his God and would not follow through with it. 
So one day she grabbed him and said, you're mine, buddy. And he ran like a new racehorse. <laughs> he ran so fast that he left his cloak, his cloak behind. She showed it to Potiphar and said, see what he tried to do? And she made up a story that he tried to rape her. Potiphar said, that's it, you're going to prison. Not only just to prison, we're going to put you in chains. And I want to pick the story up there this morning. In every situation, I want to talk to you about how to develop your character in adversity. I talked to you last week about character. What is character? The easiest definition is character is what you do when nobody else is looking. That's who you are, where nobody else is watching. Can I tell you something? Somebody's watching. So he wound up in prison. But in every situation that Joseph was in, he grew and he prospered. And the favor of God was on him. in his home, in Egypt, and in prison. Because this is the five words that you need to remember. The Lord was with him. You can put your name in there, your pronoun. The Lord is with you. Amen. He will not leave you. Genesis 30, 93, the Lord was with him, made all that he did to prosper. Then in Genesis 29, 23, <laughs> but the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. You have to learn to prosper where you are. Your character is holding your place. People that fail in life situations often are called into ministry. God doesn't choose perfect people for ministry. Can I tell you why? Tom said it. There are no perfect people. There is no perfect thing. <laughs> you thought you were. <laughs> You're not. I'm not. God doesn't wait till you get perfect to use you. See, he was using Joseph, although Joseph was not ready for the fullness of his dream. You learn how to prosper where you are. And I want to give you some valuable keys in growing your character. Is it okay if I just fly through these so I, I get this done today, hopefully? Some things you have to do in order to allow your character to grow. First of all, you have to have courage. Joseph held on to the word of God. The dream. That was the word he had from God, and he held on to it. No matter what he was going through, he held on to the word of God. Psalms 105, verses 17 through 19. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold into, as a slave, they hurt him, hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. 
the word of the Lord tested him. They hurt his feet with fetters. That word hurt in the Hebrew meant to afflict, humiliate, to cause great pain and grief, to mistreat. I got news for you. They hurt him. They put him in chains. It was not a pleasant time. You have to understand what he was going through. It was not pleasant. Not something that he would say, oh, this is fun. I'm glad God sent me to this college. <laughs> I'm glad God brought me to this spot. Oh, this is just like I thought it would be. Sunshine and flowers and potlucks and fellowships. <laughs> this is how I just thought it would be. They threw him in a dungeon. A damp, cold dungeon. With rats. Put him in chains. They hurt him. Did all that until the time that his word came to pass. The Lord tested him. Tried in King James. Tested him. That, that word test meant to refine as you would refine gold. Test the quality. Smelt it. Years ago, I don't know if they still have it. It's been before we had kids. That's been what, no, was, they were just youngsters. We came down to Carson City to see my sister. And we went to a silver place, a silver mill <coughs> museum. Is this still in Carson City? Yeah. It was so interesting. I want to share a story. Not mine, but someone else's. But starting it, I was jump off Malachi 3, verses 2 and 3. I'm not preaching on tithing. That's the next chapter. <laughs> Who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Now many people may not understand that verse. There were a group of women that were studying the book, book of Malachi in the Old Testament. They were looking at chapter 3. They came across verse 3 which says he will sit as a refiner, a purifier of silver. The verse puzzled. Heaven only knows what that means. Anybody? Dale? It's got an interesting meaning. Now you might know a little bit about what it means. But if you've never watched a silversmith work, you don't know the fullness of it. So they were puzzled about this and wondered what the statement meant about the character and nature of God. One of the women decided that she would go, she told them, I'll go find out what it is, the process of refining silver, and I'll get back to you at the next Bible study. Well, that week, this woman called up a silversmith and made an appointment to watch him at work. She didn't mention anything about the reason for her interest beyond our curiosity in the process of refining silver. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over a fire. He let it heat up. He explained that refining silver over the, refining silver, he, he explained that in refining silver, one had to hold the silver in the middle of the fire where the flame was the hottest. 
get this. As to burn away all the impurities. You wonder why God puts you through the refining fire. The woman thought about God holding us in such a hot spot. Then she thought again about that verse as he sits as a refiner of pure fire of silver. God is sitting there. He's doing the refining. She asked the silversmith if it was true that he had to sit there in front of the fire the whole time the silver was being refined. The man answered yes. And he explained not only did he have to sit there holding the silver, but that he had to keep his eyes on the silver the entire time it was in the fire. If the silver was left even a moment too long in the flames, it would be damaged. The woman was silent for a moment, then she asked the silversmith, how do you know when the silver is fully refined? He smiled and answered, oh, that's easy. When I see my image in it. Hallelujah. You wonder why God has us over the fire. He's looking for himself in you. Burns out all the impurities. Psalms 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and he cried. He left me, he lifted me out of the pit of despair. Thank God he can take you out of the pit. If you're in the pit this morning, God can lift you out. That's what he had to do to Joseph. He didn't leave him in the pit. He got him out. I mean, Joseph may not have liked the way God got him out, but he got him out of the pit. That's what the refining fire is about. He was bringing out the impurities in him. The things that maybe Joseph didn't even know. He was building character because he had a big job for Joseph to do. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a song of praise to our God. Many will see that he has done what he has done to be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. When he brings you out of the pit, he gives you a new song. Hallelujah. Amen. A song that everybody can hear. Amen. You see, God wants people to hear your song of victory. Amen. He doesn't want you to hang your harps on the little tree. The devil wants you to do that. The devil wants you to quit. He will throw everything that he has at you to cause you to quit. To cause you to give up. I spoke to this gentleman the other day. He said he, he, he knew the Lord, and then in the 70s, he quit following the Lord. He said it's been over 30 or 40 years since I've been to church, and something's missing in my life. And I prayed and said, my brother, God wants to bring you back. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to dwell in you once again. That emptiness, that hurtingness. That pit of despair that you're in, God wants to lift you out of it and give you a brand new song. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody could look like you want to get excited, but <laughs> you don't want to be looking like you're the only one. I give you permission. To be exuberant today. Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to read a few verses to you. Because I'm talking about waiting. Sometimes you have to stay in the fire. God's not through with you. He's got you in a fire for a reason. He's got you in the hottest part. The superstar had to put him on the Hottest part of the fire. 
after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, came to, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua and said to uh, the son of Nun, and said, Moses, is, my servant is dead. Therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, down all this people, and the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. In every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I told Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the high tides, and under the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Only be strong and of good courage. For under this people shalt thou divide the inheritance of land, which I swear to, that, to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and cor cor courageous, that thou mightest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from the right uh, hand or to the left hand, that thou mayest, that thou mayest prosper with the servant thou goest. Have I not commanded thee? Again, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for God, for the Lord thy God is with thee. With us wherever thou goest. Be strong and courageous. Amen. I told you that that's what that's the point that we're talking about to build character. Be strong. Hang in there. Amen. The devil wants you to run. He wants you to give up. And those words, strong and uh, be strong and of good courage, are two words that are very often connected. They're together. And they're also attached to some kind of great or difficult job that God wants you to do. Is I'll ask you the question. Is waiting on God a work so difficult that for the that whatever you're waiting for, I just left a blank there. Those that these words would be needed, be strong and let your heart take courage. Would that be needed in whatever you're going through? Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Joseph was all alone. Taken from his family, his dream seemingly crushed. How is this ever going to happen? It was looking pretty good down here in Egypt, and boom, all of a sudden, now I'm in prison and no way out. Well, you know the story. He was while he was in prison, he was able to interpret a dream, and that was given, they gave him some privileges. All right, we're going to let you out of here. Oops, they forgot about him. Let him in there. Imagine that. Two years later, he's still in prison. What's going on, God? Did, did you forget about me? Did you just bring me out of this land to Egypt? Just to forget about me? No, God had a purpose for Joseph. Waiting on God takes courage. He was waiting. Waiting is not easy. Some of you are waiting. You're just waiting for what God said was going to happen. God help me. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It takes courage. Psalms 27 and 14 says, Wait on the Lord and be strong and let your heart take courage. <coughs> Yea, wait thou on the Lord. Wait on him. If 
you look the verse before that in the 13th, the psalmist said, I would have fainted unless I had believed. Thank you for seeing that song today. I believe. Had I not believed, I would have faded. I would have given up. I would have quit. This is too hard. How many of you ever tried to do something and found out that it's, it's, this is too hard? I'm going to need something. I can't do this. Hello? Maybe you started a job and you said, this is too hard. Man, they make me come in at 8 in the morning. Won't let me go home till 5. Give me an hour lunch and two 15-minute breaks. This is too hard. Hello, generation. Hello. <laughs> not, not the people in here. Austin was a great worker. He used to serve me food. And now he don't do it anymore. I still go there, but he's not there. He said he didn't lose his job. He knows where it's at. He's just not there anymore. So he's doing something else. He would have fainted, he said. I would have lost, I would have fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm happy to tell you this morning, keep your eyes on the goal. Look towards the finish line. You may not believe it, but when I was growing up in high school, I was on the track team. Amen. Yeah, I, I, was absolutely, I wasn't quite as big as I am now. I grew into this lovely shape. <laughs> I, w I, I was a shot putter. How many know what that is? You take a cannonball. <laughs> I didn't do it now. But I would, you put it right here, and you get down, and you spin around that circle, and boom! 32 feet. Mm, pretty good. Not bad. Yeah. Can I tell you, I honestly can't remember if it was 32 feet, but in my mind, <laughs> right now, it was. I even ran the mile. Remember, who was it that ran the mile in under four minutes? Broke Jim the four Ryan. minute mile? Remember what? Jim Ryan. That's right. And it couldn't be done, and he did it, and then everybody broke the four-minute mile. Not me. <laughs> that happened after mine. But I did a good job. I ran the mile without falling down. It took me only took me 12 minutes. That's not bad, is it? I was the last one to cross, but... Somebody had to be there. <laughs> but I would have fainted had I not kept my eyes on the goal. I kept saying a little bit longer. I passed the line and said, oh, it's one now three more times. And I, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. About a quarter of a mile <coughs> along that back stretch. And I'm looking and I, I'm so out of breath, I thought, I can't even see the goal. I can't even see the finish line. I'm going to keep going in the direction. And I finally staggered across that finish line. Everybody else was in the shower, so <laughs> they were going home. We'll see you tomorrow. 
But he said, have I not kept my eyes on the goal? Had I not believed, I would have failed. Had it not been for his faith in God, his heart would have fainted. Yep. But in the confident assurance in God, which faith gives, it ur he urges himself on to remember one thing above all, that is to wait on God. Psalms 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Isaiah 40 and 31 said, I, I, I think Brother Michael mentioned this on a Wednesday night, a couple of Wednesday nights ago, I, I think. If he didn't, he will. <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen. Yes. I want to talk just for a minute about that word wait. Actually, it's a phrase, wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. That word is kava. Got it? Kava. Like Java with a K. But it's not that. <laughs> it means binding together. Like a, a cord. It means everything a rope or a cord. They take and they wind the several windings together to make it strong. That's one of the ways it's applied. It also means eagerly waiting, hoping, hoping for something, expecting it to happen. When we say we're waiting on the Lord, that means we're waiting with a spirit of expectancy. I was talking to Michael the other day. I'm intrigued with his stories. And he's taken on the task of dog parenting. <laughs> and I, I, did I meet your puppy? The one like him. Is that his relative? Uh, they're our dog, but you haven't met him yet. Say again? You haven't met him yet. Why not? Two dogs. I met Jake. Is he like Jake? Yeah, he looks like beautiful golden lamb. Golden or yellow? Retriever. Retriever. Beautiful dog. They are very easy, not easy, but they are very trainable. And Michael was telling me he could... I said, how do you get your dog to stay? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll get Freddie out and we'll tell Freddie to sit and he'll sit. And I'll say, stay, and raise his palm up and shake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to slap it down. He just don't get the command, stay. Michael was telling me that they'll run up to the food dish and they'll say, stay. And they put the food in the dish and they won't move until he says, okay. You put something down in front of Freddie, if he likes it, you better get your fingers out of the way. <laughs> and he's like a vacuum cleaner. Donna can put his food out before we can get back into the, so finally we get some peace. He's gonna stay in the kitchen and eat. Before we get back to the chair, he's vacuumed it up and he's back with us. I don't, I mean, I'm for more. My father-in-law had a, a, a black lab. And he would take, and he was so well trained, he would say, sit. He'd take a hot dog and lay it and balance it on his nose. 
and he wouldn't move until he said, okay. When he said, okay, he'd flip that hot dog, wouldn't drop it, and flip it around into his mouth and suck it down. But he wouldn't do it until he said, okay. You know why they stay like that? They're expecting something. They won't move because they're expecting something. I can set Freddie down and if I don't do something pretty quick, he's up and gone. <laughs> I think he's just too smart. That's what we keep telling ourselves. <laughs> just so smart, so smart. <laughs> But that's a good way to describe this word, waiting. That is staying there. Like we used to tell the puppy, stay, don't move. Staying there with a spirit of expectancy. I'm still expecting God. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna wait. That's what this word means, waiting on the Lord. I'm going to wait because I know God is going to do something. Amen. I know he's got something prepared for me. The Greek word is very similar to it. And it is proset kameo. Ask me how to spell it and forget it. In fact, Titus 2 and 13 tells us on it. It says, looking for that blessed hope. I'm expecting something. That blessed hope. The glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Lord uh, Jesus Christ. I am looking for him. The blessed hope. I'm waiting. I'm looking for him. Same word. Looking for him. I'm expecting him. He's coming soon. I'm expecting that to happen. Amen. Got a video just yesterday from Tammy talking about them preparing the red heifer even now. If you don't know what that's all about, they're getting ready to build the temple. They have everything in place. The red heifers, they have to use that to offer as a sacrifice because any person, that's one of the reasons they built the temple. All the, the cemetery in front of the eastern gate was to present, prevent Jesus from coming through that eastern gate when he comes back because it's prophesied. That's where he's coming from. They build a cemetery. That gate takes him right up to the temple. He can't go there because it would be unclean. That's what the red heifer is for, for them to have the ceremony to, uh, for, to, to, clean, uh, to cleanse the priest. So they could go into the temple. What's that mean? It's getting ready to happen, church. I'm expecting it. I'm waiting in a spirit of expectancy. I'm not going to get frantic. I'm going to stay. I'm going to wait to know that Jesus Christ is coming. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. He and his coming is nearer than you think. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Joseph faced a conflict between God and the promise and what he was expecting. Praise God. He chose to hold on to God's word. I'm choosing to hold on. Amen. I'm not going to give up. The devil would like to say quit. Hello? Amen. We may not post this way. <laughs> There's time the devil says, Ron. Sometimes he calls me Ronnie. Wow. Sometimes he just says you. <clears throat> says you're getting too old for this. You can't do what you used to could do. Saw a t-shirt the other day that says, Sleep 
<laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> the devil would like to say, Come on. I got a phone call the other day at One of our apartments called and said, the lights are out. I wanted to say, let there be light. <laughs> but I can't jump in the pickup truck and run down and see what the problem is. So I sent Miss Donna down. <laughs> I told her, of course, what to do. But that plays on me. Of course, Ms. Donna says, don't worry about it. She's doing the best she can, too. So she knows how to change a fuse, not flip a breaker. How many know how to change a fuse? Keep your hand, write these names down, baby. <laughs> John knows. Martin knows. He's one of our tennis. Did you lose your power the other day for a little while? We got it fixed. Except when Pete, uh, NV Energy does it. That's not my deal. <laughs> but I wait. I stay in a spirit of expectancy. God says, you don't leave. You don't leave yet. When I'm done with you, you leave. I would love to have a smile and an amen on that. Goodness gracious. Encourage me a little bit. Amen. I just told you how bad it was. The Lord said to wait. I'm not done with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, hon. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm way too got a bigger crowd. And we'll move real quickly now because we're at quitting sport. Point. Not not only do you need to have courage, you have to have loyalty. You have to be loyal. He said in Genesis 49, 22, Joseph is a fruitful bough. A fruitful bough by a well. His branches run over the wall. The archers have bitterly grieved him, shot at him, hated him. But his bow remained in strength. And the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. But his bow remained steady. His arms, verse 24, his strong arms stayed limber. Because of the hand of the mighty one of Jacob. Because the shepherd, the rock of Israel. Amen. Because of Jesus. You want to know who that rock was that followed them. And the rock that Moses spoke to and gave water. And then he struck the rock and gave water in the desert. And you want to know how that happened. That was the rock the Bible says. That rock was Christ. I got news for you. That rock I just put my feet on. That David, when they pulled him out of the miry clay and they and that pit, and they set him on a rock. And I've got I've been set on a rock this morning. I bought that rock is Jesus Christ. You stand on that steady rock, and all of the things may move, may may shift around, but the rock Christ Jesus will stay strong. He was loyal, although he was bitterly grieved. Verse 23 said, the archers have bitterly grieved him. That meant that to enrage, to make bitter. He was fighting that. Many of us, if we'd have gone through this, would have gotten bitter. Too many other things that are making you bitter. 
Joseph experienced deep pain, grief, anger, bitterness through his experience. But his arms were made strong. They were enduring. He never lost his inner flow of life with God through this experience. He was strengthened by God. I want to share a verse with you. I'm, I'm moving quickly. Don't worry, you're not slowing me down. All those amens are not bothering me. Amen. I can keep preaching. Second Chronicles 16.9. Micah, usually I'm not this long. I'm just trying to get to for the eyes of the Lord are looking and seeking throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are loyal and full of commitment to him. Amen. God is looking for somebody to strengthen, somebody that's loyal. He's looking for you. Amen. You don't have to look for him. He's looking for you. If you're loyal to him, he's looking for you. Amen. He wants to strengthen you. Here in his word, we, we read that God is searching out someone who is loyal. God's looking for men and women that will stand for him. Be loyal. Amen. Third thing, keep a positive outlook. Amen. Attitude is everything. This is going to sting a little bit. And what makes it worse is you already think he's already over, it's already past 12. So from now on, it's going to sting, even if it's not stinging. Sometimes God wants you to check your attitude. <laughs> Anybody ever, ever had an attitude? <laughs> Go ahead and smack him. <laughs> You're in church, you get forgiveness. <laughs> Sean says she has. I got a feeling it's probably the other way around. <laughs> Attitude is everything. Joseph abides by the law and resides in prison where the Lord is with him. Still, the, the jailer trusts Joseph because whatever Joseph does, the Lord sees to it that it's success. So the jailer says, I'm going to put you in charge of jail. I'm going I'm to place you in charge. Joseph made the assignments. Joseph took care of the prisoners. I got a feeling it was a lot more pleasant under Joseph's administration. Writing from prison, Paul, the apostle, wrote about the attitude a Christian should have. Philippians 1 and 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a long verse, but I'm just convinced it. He's telling us that no matter what unexpected disruptions, frustrations, or difficulties come our way, we are to respond with a Christ-like attitude. Amen. Sometimes, to use a southern term, we just fly off the handle. You ever done that? Yes, you want to? Yes. Is this still on? I got the yeah. controls right here. Amen. Testing one, two. How you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Sometimes we fly off the handle. Yeah. And you have to come back later and apologize. You ever done that? I'm waiting on some video. <laughs> Sometimes we do that. Then we have to go back and say, babe, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Here's something. Go, here's a credit card. Go and enjoy the afternoon. 
She says, okay. <laughs> We've all done that. But we have to be able to keep the attitude in check. Somebody said attitude determines altitude. Keep a positive outlook. Philippians 2 5 says your attitude to, to your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians 5 and 1 tells us to be imitators of Christ. As you, as you read Matthew, I'm not going to read it, but as you read Matthew 5, uh, 5 Start about 14 to 16. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is somewhere on the mount. And it is, if you read that whole, whole three chapters, someone said everything that's in it, the Christian can find everything they need in those three chapters. I'm not saying I leave the rest of the Bible out, but at least look at those three. But he tells us that the city is built to sit on a hill. To be seen. A candle that is lit, he said, don't let it be under, put under a bushel. Don't cover that light. Let your light so shine so that men will see it. God wants you to shine. Wants to see how you're responding. And people are watching you. Everything you do, every word you say, every time you fly off of the handle, they say, oh yeah, what you see, you go do. Tell me that again. And you say the First Baptist Church? No. Rejoice in Philippians 4 and 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Amen. Verse 9. Put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Final thing. And I can do it in five minutes. I know you believe me. <laughs> you have to be a servant. What is a servant? You have to be willing to serve others. Joseph was willing to serve. Genesis 29, 21-23. The Lord made it to prosper. Whatever he did, the Lord made it to prosper. The Lord was with Joseph, showed him mercy. He gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison committed to Joseph, Joseph's hand, all the prisoners. And whatever they did, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look at anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. Whatever he did, may he made it to prosper. In every situation, no matter how difficult it was, it all prospered. See, God's got something for you. Amen. He wants you to go forward. One other thing I want to share with you. As you look at Joseph's life, and we're talking about Joseph's journey to victory. And we're doing a character study on him. Joseph's life provides us with a beautiful example of a person who is totally committed living a godly life regardless of the circumstances that he encountered. Joseph exhibits the character of God through his faithfulness, integrity, purity, and mercy. In our everyday lives, we need to implement the principles that we see in the life of Joseph. Now, I want to challenge you. If you want to be blessed, watch Joseph's life. 
and next the next time I get on the life of Joseph will be the conclusion. So I want to talk about in Genesis chapter 50 when he finally reveals himself to his family. The devil wanted to wipe out the Egypt, the Jews. Yeah. He's tried that many times. He's trying it today. Yeah. Yeah. Hamas thinks they got him right where we want. <laughs> Much of our nation has aligned themselves with the Palestinians. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying you better leave God's people alone. Amen. Touch not mine anointed. Yeah. God's going to take care of Israel. Yeah. Amen. And I don't know if you can see it. I don't have a t-shirt. But I do believe we need to stand with Israel. Yeah. Amen. 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 Support them. Do what we can do. Love them. Pray for them. Amen. And you'll see what happened to Joseph. God didn't forget him. God did not forget him or the Jews. That's right. We'll see that next week. Amen.